In this video, we want to take a look at final state observability estimates for a very concrete example of non-autonomous differential operators. To this end, we first fix a value of p between 1 and infinity and the Banner space x, which should be an LP space on a d-dimensional space. Then we specify our non-autonomous Cauchy problem, which is given via u prime equals a of t, which is a non-autonomous family of operators, and our initial value u0, which lays in Lp. How is our operator a of t defined? a of t of the function f will be defined via a Fourier multiplier, namely the inverse Fourier transform of a polynomial a of t, which time, with time-dependent coefficients, times the Fourier transform of f. And this expression makes sense for all f in the space of Schwarz functions, s of rd. Our non-autonomous polynomial a will be defined as the sum over all multi-indices alpha that have length less or equal than m and index the coefficients a alpha that depend on time of our polynomial times i times xi, our spatial variable, to the alpha. In addition to the non-autonomy of our polynomial, we also want it to be uniformly, with respect to time, elliptic. And by the rules for the Fourier transform and polynomials, we know that this polynomial indeed, when inside this Fourier multiplier, corresponds to a differential operator. The domains of definition for these kinds of operators are also well known and are given via the Zobolev space WMP of the space RD. Now recall that the observability problem not only consists of a Cauchy problem, but also of an observation equation, which is given via a operator family C of t in our case. The time dependence now is visible in the following. C of t of f will be nothing else than the multiplication of f with an indicator function where the sets of this indicator function also depend on time. We will see later that we cannot choose omega of t arbitrarily, but that this family of sets also needs to fulfill certain geometric conditions. In order to prove that there exists a final state observability estimate for our given Cauchy problem, we first need to show that there exists an exponentially bounded evolution family for this non-autonomous Cauchy problem. And then we also need to find a certain family P lambda for which we can also show the dissipativity and the uncertainty estimate. Let us start with the existence of a bounded evolution family. We will only sketch the proof here. For our evolution family, we choose UTS of U to be the inverse Fourier transform of exp exponential of the integral from s to t of our non-autonomous polynomial a at tau d tau times the Fourier transform of u. The exponential boundedness of our evolution family follows from certain heat kernel estimates. Just recall that exponential boundedness means that we can bound the operator norm of our evolution family by a constant m times the exponential of omega times t minus s. The next step on our way to a final state observability estimate is a dissipativity inequality. Namely, we need to find a family of, so to say, spectral projectors, p lambda, that are bounded operators on x, such that we have an estimate of the following form. Namely, we can estimate identity minus one of the p lambdas times our evolution family by an exponential term. 
we give a short sketch of the proof. First, we write our evolution family as a product of two other evolution families, V tilde and U tilde. For the definition of our two evolution families, V tilde and U tilde, recall how we defined our original evolution family, U, by associating it with a non-autonomous polynomial. Now V tilde will just consider the highest order terms of our polynomial A of t. Namely, V tilde of Ts will come from the polynomial of the sum of all alphas of highest order, so with length m, times c halves, where c is the ellipticity constant of a, times the coefficients of a that correspond to the highest order. And u tilde will take care of the rest, namely it will be associated to the polynomial that we get when you subtract b from our polynomial a. Now the main ingredients for the proof of the dissipativity will be that our new evolution family u tilde is just as the original one exponentially bounded and that the second evolution family v tilde is essentially the power of the Laplacian. In the next step, we'll take a look at how we need to define the p lambdas such that this proofs actually go through. We define p lambda to be the convolution operator with kernel inverse Fourier transform of chi lambda, which is a function that we still need to specify with f, chi lambda is essentially a smooth bump function. Our function chi lambda is essentially a smooth bump function. It consists of a function eta that is c infinity, one in this inner interval and zero outside an outer interval. Here find a sketch of the one-dimensional function eta by plugging in the absolute value of the variable xi, which stems from rd, we get our d-dimensional smooth cutoff function. Because of the smoothness of xi lambda and, as we see, also a compact support, our function p lambda is actually a bounded operator on our Banach space x, which is lp. This finishes our short sketch of the proof, and we will use p lambda now in the last proposition, which concerns the uncertainty estimate. Uncertainty or an uncertainty estimate for a given family p lambda of spectral projectors means that we may estimate p lambda of f by e to the minus lambda times the norm of our observation operator which in our case is the indicator function with the, our family of sets omega of t and p lambda of f. Once again, we only give a sketch of the proof. By the theory of Fourier analysis, we know that an estimate of the above type holds if we have for the support of the Fourier transform of a function in our case p lambda f, that it lays within a cube of side length 2 lambda. A statement of this form is often referred to as a lokvinenko zereda theorem. We can see that the properties of p lambda by definition guarantee already that the support lays within this cube. However, as announced in the beginning, an estimate of the above form won't hold without additional conditions on our family of sets omega of t. The geometric condition on the family omega of t is referred to as thickness, or in our case, 
of a non-autonomous family a uniform thickness. In detail, this means there exists rho and L, two constants, such that for every cube QL, which is defined as just the product of intervals of length L1 to LD, that the intersection of our set omega of t with a translated cube has a Lebesgue measure that can be compared to rho times the side length of our cube. In particular, this means that our set omega has to be well spread all along uh, our space R of D. There can't be any holes of arbitrary size. The uniformity of this estimate can be seen as follows. Note that this estimate on the measure holds for every set omega of t, while the right-hand side does not depend on the time. So, the additional assumption in our proposition needs to be that our family omega of t is uniformly rho L thick. This means that an estimate as the following denoted by star holds for certain parameters rho and lambda. The good thing about this is that the constant k in this estimate will only depend on rho and l and the dimension d, but it won't depend on time, even though our family is time dependent, and it also won't depend on the parameter p that we chose for our LP space. This closes also the proof of the uncertainty estimate. And we have all ingredients at hand to show that for the given Cauchy problem and observation equation, our system actually has a final state observability estimate. So summarizing what we have shown so far is that if omega of t is a uniformly thick family of sets for our observation operator c of t, we actually have a final state observability estimate. On the other hand, what is also possible to show is that if our family omega of t does not depend on time, meaning that it's constant, we are also able to show that the converse holds, namely that the final state observability estimate itself already implies a geometric condition namely that omega of t is uniformly thick. However, if omega of t does depend on time, what we will show next is that we are able to derive a slightly weaker geometric condition on the family omega t, namely that omega t is now mean thick. And we will explain this term in a second. The definition of mean thickness is best understood if one starts with the usual definition of thickness, namely that for a family of sets omega of t, rho and l as parameters for the thickness, we have the Lebesgue measure of our set intersected with a translate of a cube with side lengths l, and we can estimate this measure by rho times L1, the side length of the first side, multiplied with all the other side lengths up to the side length of the side D. This estimate alone is thickness, or if it holds uniformly for all T, this was uniform thickness. Thickness in the mean now means that for a fixed time interval, from zero to capital T, this inequality only holds in the mean sense, meaning that we integrate and then we take the mean value of these Lebesgue measures. Now, it is straightforward to see that the family omega of T that is uniformly thick is also mean thick with the same parameters. On the other hand, to see that 
mean thickness is indeed weaker than uniform thickness, consider the following example. Take omega of t to be either the left half of the real line for t smaller than one half or the right half for t greater or equal than one half. Then this set is mean thick, but it's not uniformly thick. More precisely, the family omega of t is L one half mean thick for every L greater than zero. For the last part of this video, we now want to show that mean thickness is a necessary condition for final state observability of a non-autonomous system. We only give a short sketch of the proof. The proof will be carried out by contradiction. So assume that we have a final state observability estimate, but our family omega of t is not mean thick. Then there exists a sequence xn of points in Rd such that the mean value of the Lebesgue measures of our set omega of t intersected with a ball centered in xn and radius n can be estimated by 1 over n. Furthermore, we choose a function f that is in the Schwarz space with p norm equals to 1 and define a sequence of translates fn by using f and shifting the input by xn. Now, our goal is to create a contradiction with respect to our initial assumption that we have a final state observability estimate. This contradiction will be of the following form, namely that the integral of the norms of our observations, which are given via indicator function of our observation set omega t times the solution to our Cauchy problem with initial value fn in the p-norm goes to zero for n to infinity. As a first step, we use the definition of fn to shift the argument xn to our indicator function here. And we define the new shifted set via capital theta n. Now, by intersecting theta n with the ball xn and with the complement of the ball, we can decompose this integral into two integrals. Note that we take the pth power and therefore we get an additive decomposition of the above integral of the following form. Now, the first part of the sum can be es estimated by a constant c times the Lebesgue measure of theta n intersected with b0n. And this integral goes to zero because of the assumption that the family omega of t is not mean thick. For the right-hand side, we can show that for n going to infinity, this whole norm goes to zero via dominated conversions. In fact, now the integrand goes to zero for each time t within the interval from zero to capital T. Via dominated convergence, the whole integral from zero to t goes to zero for n going to infinity. And this brings us to our contradiction. The middle part of this last line actually needs to exist because of our assumption of the existence of a final state observability estimate. There needs to exist a constant c, such that we may estimate the norm of the final state by an integral of the norms of the observations. But the right-hand side, as we just proved, goes to zero 
under the assumption that omega of t is not mean thick. On the other hand, the final state per constructionem of the fn's does not depend on n at all and is different from zero. Therefore, our initial assumption that omega of t causes an contradiction. It must be wrong. Therefore, omega of t needs to be mean thick. And we have finished our proof. As we have seen, mean thickness of a family of sets omega of t is indeed necessary for final state observability. The open question I want to propose at the end of this video is whether there may be something in between of these two notions, uniform thickness and mean thickness, that is indeed, just as in the case of a constant family of sets, equivalent to final state observability.